Hi everyone, today we are going to study Trivial File Transfer Protocol also known as TFTP. The network as we know is made up of various devices and these devices are either connected by Ethernet or any wireless means. The communication for transferring file takes place between these connected devices. So obviously because uh, unless the devices are connected to each other the communication cannot take place. So the devices need to be connected either by means of Ethernet or by any other wireless means only then the communication can take place between those devices. Therefore net network protocols are required that these protocols help in facilitating the communication by setting some standard rules and conventions for communication among those devices which all the devices must adhere to. Network protocols are defined as rules that describe the format of data. So these protocols basically define the rules and conventions for the format of data, how the communication will take place, etc. TFTP stands for file transfer for trivial file transfer protocol. TFTP is defined as a protocol that is used to transfer a file from a client to a server and from a server to a client. So basically whenever data transfer has to take place from a client to a server and then from, back from a server to a client, TFTP is used. TFTP is majorly used when no complex instructions are required by the client and server. That means when there is no complexity in data communication, uh, much uh, there are no complex instructions. In such cases, TFTP can be used for communication between a client and a server. The service of T TFTP is provided by UDP. So uh, the user datagram protocol is used by the TFTP protocol and it works on port number 69. TFTP does not provide security feature. Now as we already know when we started UDP we studied that UDP is, a, a, um, is not a reliable protocol for data communication. So TFTP since uses the services of UDP, so TFTP does not provide any security feature. Therefore, it is not used in communications that take place over the internet because internet requires security from hackers. And since TFTP does not provide this security, so it is not used on the internet. So where it is used then? It is used only for the systems that are set up on the local internet. Local internets are the LANs uh, which are usually used within a building or within a campus. So uh, this is where TFTP is majorly used that is on the local internet. TFTP requires less amount of memory. Now let's look at the TFTP message format. There are four types of TFs, uh, TFTP message formats and these are the first one is your read request. Read request is also known as type 1 and a read request is used by the client to get a copy of file from the server. So whenever a client has to get a copy of file from the server that, it, that means it wants to read a file. In that case a read request is used by the client. Then the second format is your write request. Write request is also known as type 2. Now read request is known as type 1 and write request is known as type 2. Write request is used by the client for writing a file into the server. So as the name suggests write request it is for writing a file onto the server. So whenever a client wants to write a file onto the server it uses the write request. Then the third format is data. But data is also known as type 3. So the type of data is type 3 and data consists of a block of file that is being copied. So what is data? Data is actually that actual message that has to be copied. So it consists of that particular block of file that is being copied. The data block is of fixed size that is 512 octets. That means you cannot copy more than 500 12 octets of a block of a file at any given point of time since it is fixed. 
तो फोर्थ फॉर्मैट इज एक्नॉलेजमेंट एक्नॉलेजमेंट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज टाइप फोर सो द टाइप फॉर एक्नॉलेजमेंट इज टाइप फोर एंड द डेटा प्रेजेंट एट द लास्ट इन द मैसेज कंसिस ऑफ द एंड ऑफ फाइल सो एट द एंड ऑफ द डेटा यू फाइंड द एंड ऑफ फाइल और ई ओ एफ वेयर द साइज इज लेस देन फाइव हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व ऑक्टेट्स सो एट द लास्ट ऑफ द डेटा वेयर द एंड ऑफ फाइल इज प्रेजेंट द साइज के नॉट बी मोर देन फाइव हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व ऑक्टेट्स दिस एक्नोलेजमेंट दिस पर्टिकुलर एंड ऑफ फाइल पोर्शन दैट मीन्स द एंड ऑफ द ब्लॉक ऑफ डेटा इज नोन एज एक्नोलेजमेंट एंड दिस एक्नोलेजमेंट इज यूज बाई द क्लाइंट एंड सर्वर फॉर एक्नोलेजिंग द रिसीव्ड डेटा सो वेन एवर अ क्लाइंट रिसीव द डेटा फ्रॉम द सर्वर और सर्वर रिसीव द डेटा फ्रॉम द क्लाइंट दे यूज एक्नोलेजमेंट इन ऑर्डर टू लेट the client or the server know that the uh, other side has received the data now let's look at the working of tftp tftp makes use of port number 69 as we've already discussed so tftp makes use of which particular port number port number 69 and it uses which protocol it uses the services of which protocol it uses the services of the user datagram protocol that is your UDP. When the connection is established between the client and the server, the client makes a read a request or write request. So obviously, first of all, a connection needs to be established on a local uh, internet between the client and the server. Then, when the connection is established between the client and the server, then depending upon what the client wants to do, whether the client wants to read the data from the server or whether the client wants to write the data onto the server, the client makes a uh, makes a request respectively. So, if it wants to write a data onto the server, it will make a read request, which is also known as RRQ. And if the client wants to write something onto the server, it will make a write request, which is known as WR. Q. If a client wants to only read a file, it requests RRQ, as I told you. And if the client wants to write some data into the server, then it requests for WRQ. Once the connection is established and a request is made, communication of file takes place in the form of small packets, as we know. that in any form of communication uh, breaking the original uh, message into smaller packets is always a good practice because that uh, avoids any kind of congestion so whenever a data transfer has to be made after the connection is established during the communication then in that case the uh, file is first of all broken into smaller packets and these packets are 512 bytes each each packet is of 512 bytes the server then communicates the packet back to the client and waits until it receives its acknowledgement from the client that the packet has been received so if the server is requesting some data from the server um, sorry if the client is requesting some data from the server then the server sends that data packet to the client and then it waits for an acknowledgement for the client to let uh, the client tell the server that it has received the data packet from the server when the acknowledgement is received from the client side the server again sends the next packet which is 512 bytes each so when the acknowledgement for the first packet arrives at the server server knows that this particular packet has been received so then it again sends another data packet which is of 512 bytes again because as i told you each packet is of 512 bytes each so just like if the previous packet was of 512 bytes the other packet will also be of 512 bytes and so on till all the data packets have been delivered so after receiving an acknowledgement from the client the server sends the next data packet which is again of 512 bytes so these same steps are as mentioned above are repeated or continued until the last packet of that particular file is sent by the server to the client so this is how the tftp works now let's look at the applications of tftp TFTP is used to transfer files within clients and servers connected in a local network. TFTP is used to transfer the configuration files within a network. That means within the same network. TFTP is used 
to update the firmware on the devices that are connected to the network and TFTP is used in applications where no authentication is required because it is not a reliable so um, reliable protocol as it uses the services provided by UDP which itself does not provide reliable services.